Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Are we up? There you go. All right, Friday Night Flies. As usual, we always have to have a little bit of complications when it comes to Friday Night Flies. If we could turn that disco fever off in the background. Whew. Hopefully, hopefully everybody's able. Yeah, we had uh, people chiming in left, right, and center. Left, right, and center. As usual. There's lots going on in the background now because we've been freaking this like disco fever up in here. We've got some new music in the background. We got tires tying all over the place. We got fans far and wide tuning in. We want to make sure that you're able to see the show first and foremost. And tonight, tonight we're working on the Magnum Clouser. Magnum. And the boys, of course, they said the Magnum should probably be tied in black. But I can assure you that the Magnum can also be white. And tonight, she's a white Magnum. I might have got a little carried away with the head. This was the first one, of course. You got to whip it together so that we've got something to roll slick and quick in the in the vise. Maybe we'll go down to camera four here, and I'll give this beautiful Magnum Clouser a slow roll. And as you can see, this is what I'm talking about. The head's a little bit big right now, but we're talking Magnum. You don't want a skimpy head on a Magnum, if you notice. It would be kind of a little bit on the goofy side. Magnum means girthy, not skimpy, skinny. This is the Magnum we're talking about. So, this little pattern here, I should say this is a big pattern when it comes to Clousers. We had a huge success with this beautiful fly when we were in Hawaii, freshwater fishing for, uh, well, they call them Tucanary there, but they're also known as peacock bass. We caught largemouth bass on it. We caught smallmouth bass on it. And, um... Uh, you know, we took it to the saltwater and we also caught uh, bonefish as well, which is pretty damn dope. When you got fish that eat other fish, guess what they're going to do? They're going to eat the fish or the fry, the fly that looks like a fish that's wounded its easy meal. Kind of like me when I drive by McDonald's and I smell french fries. It's tough for me to not make a right hand turn, if you know what I'm saying. Hit the drive through and then hit a two cream and a large coffee. But anyhow, we're going to get started here with the, the show. We'll give this a slow roll first, and then we're going to get busy. Okay, here we go. So we're starting out with a hook that I was throwing some thread on, and suddenly we got chimed in at like a million miles an hour from about three different uh, uh, area codes and uh, probably two different countries all chimed in. It could have been three different countries because well, how many people were watching? And I might as well have been throwing like gang signs or like sign language in the background because you couldn't hear me, but now you can hear me. So I do have a little bit of thread on this hook and I'm using, what am I using? I'm using a Mustad S74 SNP DT size four it's a two extra heavy and four extra long hook made by Mustad, which is one of the finest hook manufacturers on planet Earth. So we're gonna get busy. We're using a three-aught unithread in pink. And as you can see, I just laid a little bit of pink thread down on this just to give these dumbbell eyes I'm about to attach to it. This is a 3 16ths Fly Eyes Plus by Superfly. And this is what this is what them dumbbells look like. Dumbbell eyes. Alright, so you don't want to crowd this eye of the hook too much. So we're gonna set it back a little bit. That way you can get crazy with it a little bit. And don't worry about it sitting all funny at first because we got some tricks up our sleeves here at Friday Night Flies. And what you're doing is you're just throwing 
figure eights over back and forth back and forth back and forth anchor it down back and forth couple in front roll it over couple in behind and then you want to look at it kind of directly and i can't do that with the camera because that means i'd have to focus everything back in but i'm just looking down the barrel here making sure that these eyes are square true to the fly all right you don't want to lock them down sitting all sideways and crazy looking because then it'll look like a goofy looking fish i mean hey maybe maybe the predatorial fish would be like hey there's easy pickings but if it don't swim right nine out of ten times that predatorial fish will come up have a look at it and be like hey man that that something doesn't look right there and it's going to turn and burn and then you're going to be like damn why didn't i get that fish so make it look good first time tie it off straight and then what we're going to do we're going to just lock these threads down so it's not moving around it's nice and true looking pretty and we're going to take a little bit of solar as bone dry we're just going to give it a dab a dab will do just throw it up over top here let it sink in for two seconds somebody's ran away with my uh uv light here and if i could get it back briefly i will give it back to you so anyhow just make sure this locked in you can see all that nice gooey shiny stuff all up in there it's like head cement but better and you can see did you get a puff of smoke mm -hmm. these uv lights man yep. and the reality is, is that once you hit it with this light she's cured that's not like nail polish or head cement you gotta wait for two days and then you stick it in your fly box and it makes every other fly in there smell like nail polish but that's the nice thing about this stuff anyhow now what you're gonna do is that when this thing's in the water it's actually gonna run like this it's gonna run a little bit upside down it should run upside down and like most fish their belly is lighter than their back that's why we throw white on the belly because it's going to sit like this and then you put the darker pattern up on top and that video in the background is really throwing me for a loop here i'm hearing myself talking in the background i do sound good but it's starting to get a little confusing but anyhow so you got white on the belly throw a little bit of flash in there just to get their attention and then you put a little bit of dark on top so now that we said that let's get some white on the belly which is a white bucktail and you can see we've been tying a few flies this whole side's almost gone i got a new pair of scissors here my good friend down at uh what is it Where, where's uh zach working now i can't even remember where the hell he's working yeah. pacific angler pacific angler he sent us the new right choice tackle razor scissors and damn these things are sharp and they look pretty man look at that look, a little bit of bling can you see that bling bedazzled bedazzled that's right <laughs> you gotta look good when you're a pro bro so anyhow we got a little bit of this <laughs> bedazzling and uh yeah the only problem with the bedazzling is that your eight-year-old daughter wants to get her hands on the damn scissors and they don't do too well when you lawn dart them into a hardwood floor or concrete and they ain't cheap so we got this in and like the last fly that we tied last week instead of stacking it all i do is i kind of go in here grab a few of the long ones out the tips pull them out oh there we go we're getting this looking pretty now pull out the loose ones in the back end and then you just look at that you don't even need a hair stacker when you know what you're doing Man, I've been tying flies before hair, hair stackers were even a thing. Like, uh, before we tied on hooks, we actually carved out, like, uh, walrus teeth. And that was, like, what we used for hooks. So, take that. You want to go a little bit longer because it is magnum. I mean, your, your standard clouser would look something like this. It's almost double the length of your, the shank of your hook. But since we got the uh, 4X or yeah they're they're four extra long you don't really need to get too too crazy on the length but you want it sticking out off the back of it a little bit so about so and what we got is about an inch off the back of the hook match it up cut those tips off throw them away because we're rich 
and famous and we're just going to put a couple loose wraps up on top just to keep it all on top and that's the big thing is that if it ain't on top it ain't gonna work and in this case it's not really on top all that well so you want to keep it all up on top so I'm gonna switch it here I'm gonna go lefty lefty style just to try and keep that sucker up on oh look at that that trick worked somewhat there we go looking good I'm gonna lock that down get a little bit more tighter with the wraps and then all you're gonna do is take this fur up nice and tight go underneath go to the other side lock it down all up on top and you can chase it back a little bit the biggest thing is is that you want to uh, Put a little bit of pink on the back side here. You'll see here in a second why. Okay, so it's all up on top. Bottom's looking clean. Top's looking clean. And then what we'll do is work our way back up to the dumbbells. You don't want to build it up too big at the head. And then we go back here, going back to the bone dry. If you want to make that thread pop, this is how you make the thread pop. Like not blow up, but. I mean, I'm, you want to make it look good, shiny, and you want it to stand up to them teethy fish, or toothy fish, <laughs> teethy fish. There it is. See that man makes them threads pop, make them pop. Ooh, I seen the smoke that time, bud. I don't know. If we want to be inhaling that stuff. There you go, cured just like that. Now we're going back to the head. At this point, what I'm going to do. Is I'm just gonna flip this hook over in the vise. I just find that it's a little bit easier to get at on these griffins if you just flop the vise over. Is this still okay in the in the screen? Can you see it okay still? Okay. First and foremost, we gotta make sure that you guys can see what we're doing here. Okay. So now what we've got is I've got a little bit of flashaboo. This one is a uh, the Ice Blue Pearl Flashaboo, super supple and sexy, and extra limp, which is not what you want when you're tying Magnum, but you want the flow. So the flow with a little extra limp, yeah, well, it sounds dangerous. And then we're also gonna bury a little bit of Crystal Flash and UV Pink, just to make it look like it's bleeding, or it's wounded, or it's fleshy. Maybe something's got its teeth on it already. So we're going to start off with a little bit of crystal flash. Hope you guys are tying along. Well, you probably aren't tying along right now because I didn't give you the, the menu prior. So we're going to just flop this guy up on top. But if you guys are looking for the, the recipes, like right now they're not, like I haven't got them anywhere. But here later today, they're going to be on our website. So if you want the recipe for this Magnum Fly... I mean, it works in a bunch of different patterns, like colors and whichever, but the big thing is is to have a lighter belly on the underside. The contrast works, makes a big difference for you. So with your flash, you want to keep it about even with the tail or slightly shorter. So there's the crystal flash. And now we're going to go to the flashaboo and the blue, the ice blue. Ice blue. We're going to try our best not to uh, make too much noise here. I don't know. We probably got about uh, eight or ten strands in there. Nothing too crazy. I mean, with the, your standard clausers, you probably go a little bit more sparse, but you got a lot more fly to fill out here. So same thing. We don't want to build this up too, head, too biggy, too early, because uh, the next thing you know is that uh, your head's going to be extra magnum. She's going to be real girthy. Okay, up on top. There we go. We're just locking it in place. Okay, same thing with this guy. You want to keep it about the same length as the other. And a touch longer. And then we're going to tie this all together. The underbelly's the upside. So, I mean, that's the thing about clousers is that it actually swims this way. So, the, 
bottom is the top and the top is the bottom. If that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so we got a chartreuse bucktail. We're going to take a chunk of that beautiful stuff out. Find a nice, clean, lengthy chunk of this. There we go. There's the goods right there. Swing for the fence. Clean. Okay, what do we got here? Same thing. We're just going to go in here, clean out the long, the extra long ones come out, throw them away, go up to the head, pull out the little shorties. And like I said, before before we had hair stackers, we just did it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so that looks perfect about the right length, right about there. I'm going to cut, match it up, finish this head off, call her a night. Ethan's in the house. Our good friend Zach Copeland has a good pattern tonight. Ricky McKay. He's got a nice pattern. What are you tying tonight, Ricky? Oh, the coho killer there. Oh, the coho killer. You're sure you want to share that pattern here tonight? <laughs> Questionable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're just making sure that everything's up on top. You don't want to be throwing it on the bottom. Okay, now all we're going to do is just clean it up nice and pretty. A nice head. A well-proportioned head for this magnum fly. Take it off. We've got a couple loose ones in there. Let's, now's the time to get rid of them. And then we're going to go in here. I've got one little straggler here. White. You don't want to have those white hairs sticking out. And now we're going to give it a quick whip finish. And then we're going to turn this camera over to the boys. Just like that. I don't know what happened there with the... That thread, I don't know what happened there, but it got a little funky. But we'll just clean that up right now before we hit it with all the stuff. Perfect. Now, finish this head off. In fashion, we're going to slop a little bone dry in here. Bone dry it is. See that? I have my tongue out again. Jeez. Concentration. I'm going to get just a little bit more. Man, I've been using this so much lately. I've almost killed the whole bottle of bone dry. Make it look pretty. Okay, this fly is near done. Smoking away. Fini. Now we're going to take this fly. I'm going to flop it over so you can actually see what it looks like the right way up. Was it really the right way? It's not. I mean, it's going to swim the other way, but... Hey, we want to make sure that you can see what it looks like. Hey, the more times you tie these patterns, you can see a little bit of an improvement from this fly to that fly. See the head is a little bit better. Still girthy. It's a magnum. It's got to be girthy. So now let's go back up to sign. I'm going to sign out here on page three. Woo! We got the disco fever up in here again. Here, we'll kill that disco fever. Anyhow. I'm Brad Knowles, a.k.a. The Fish Finder, and uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, watching tonight. Sometimes my jokes aren't that funny, but uh, you're, you're allowed to laugh no matter what. And uh, continue to watch. We've got a great show for you tonight. we got Zach Copeland's in the house. we got Rick McKay's in the house. Ethan Cox in the house. This party's just getting started. Anyhow, we're going to side out with that. Take it away, cameraman.